I am very sure when they will really trace out inside their heart, in hearts of hearts, surely everybody has got some liking. Because this question came to me uh, from one of the candidates and then I, I kept on asking him, okay, what was the routine yesterday? What do you, you have done during your vacations? So he said, sir, I don't do anything, I just sleep and I go to the hospital. लेकिन मैं सर पुराने गाने सुनता हूँ। I said that is your hobby। Then I asked him पुराने गाने किसके सुनते हो? बोले सर किशोर कुमार का भी सुनता हूँ, मोहम्मद रफी को भी सुनता हूँ, मुकेश को भी सुनता हूँ, लता मंगेशकर को भी सुनता हूँ। I said सबसे अच्छे किसके लगते हैं? He said सर मोहम्मद रफी के अच्छे लगते हैं। I said see he is your favorite singer। कौन से पिक्चर के गाने अच्छे � so he had some names of the movies also. Then I said, these are your favorite movies. So that's how one has to, sometimes people do not know meaning of hobbies. They may be practicing. Like uh, sometimes you ask them, they refer their games as hobby also. There are games, chess, playing chess can be a game as well as a hobby also. But normally among games, it is indoor and outdoor. And since chess is slightly sedentary, uh, uh, it can be a hobby also. But suddenly everybody has got something or the other. What qualifies as a hobby for you? Whenever you have got even 5-10 minutes and you spend some time. Like you have put a canvas and you have got a free time. You started just brushing up. And uh, the moment you, st you have picked up your brush and put some paint somewhere. And then you... Either get reminded of some urgent work or you get a call where, which generates the urgency for some other work. And you keep your brush aside and then uh, again whenever you get time then you again go ahead with putting two or three brushes here and there. These are hobbies. Games are outdoor or indoor but whether it is outdoor or indoor it, it involves either team or the matches with single, lot of sweating, running, exercising goes on. Those are games basically. Hobbies can be gardening, it can be painting, it can be clay modeling also, it can be stamp collection, it can be coin collection, it can be cooking also. In cooking, there are a lot of varieties like Indian, Thai, Chinese, Mughlai, Punjabi, South Indian, so many varieties are there. In gardening, so many varieties are there. Where is the kitchen gardening or flower gardening or maintenance of pot or maintenance of lawn. So many things are there. And then everything requires a different expertise. You need to know which season, which flowering plant has to be put, how much is the size of the pit, which all manures or fertilizers are required. All these are very important aspect. Uh, one has to be involved in his hobby. It is not much that you will have dozen of hobbies. No, one hobby, but then go ahead with that. Get involved in that. Future defense officers. If playing badminton is your favorite game, and you are preparing for SSP. Then these are some of the questions which I'll be telling you, which will develop your confidence, in which will change your body language also during your SSB interview. In case still you are left with any question, kindly write in the comment box. First and foremost things, you should know about the history of badminton how it started and you will be surprised to know that badminton started from India. In 1860s basically for the British officers 
they had started this particular game and when they went back to england during their leave or any change over in gloucester side club this game became popular and from there it becomes in india it was called pune because it started in the military barracks of pune cantonment which is in maharashtra after from gloucester side it came back and it became badminton things remain same very nice at least this game has got a historical connection with india <coughs> we should know the old name the new name when it got changed and basic reference about the history then we should know about our achievements which question number 2 the achievement of indian shuttlers at international level whether it was prakash padukone the old arjun awardi asian bronze medalist and the all england badminton champion then comes the pulela gopichan he is a second player second indian player to win all england badminton championship it is the most prestigious international tournament for the badminton in the world we should know about pv sindhu she is the only girl who has won two individual medal one silver and in the last olympics she got a bronze medal she is the youngest player to get the rajiv gandhi khel ratna award we should know about saina nehwal kadambi shrikant sayed modi and there are so many other players and especially you should know more about your favorite badminton player then you should know that in the question number 3 in the today's arena you should know about who are the national players who are still active at the international arena then you should know about the international player also something like lin dang or the olympic champion carolina marin chang long and so many other players then i come to question number 4 you should know about the national and international tournaments whether it is all england badminton championship whether it is thomas cup or uber cup or asian games olympics you should know about this question number 5 you should know about how the government of this country our country is harnessing players at junior level at younger ages the tournament under 14 under 17 under 19 we should know when these tournaments are conducted and what kind of talents has really come up from there we should know about the famous club also like pulela gopichand club at hyderabad and maybe some other also then let's come to the badminton court question number 6 what are the dimensions of the court for the singles for the doubles what is the height of the net the top portion and even the lower portion from the ground we should be very clear about all this thing. then you should know the rules also sometimes rule changes and sometimes rules are so important especially when there is a deuce when the score is tied up how the match is decided after that you should know about the double fault how it why it occurs why it is called double fault and in case there are latest changes in doubles and singles so now i come to question number now i come to question number 8 that if you are the sports minister of india what all changes you like to bring for the badminton at the national level at the state level at district level what kind of nodes or the training infrastructure you like to develop what kind of the training facility you like to develop i want your opinion on that sorry question number 10 which is the best exercise for the badminton player which you recommend i'll come to question number 11 what are the five basic shots in the badminton something like drive drop or shot something like that there are very famous five shots i come to question number 
वट आर डिसएडवांटेज ऑफ प्लेइंग बैडमिंटन और इट कैन बी पुट इन अदर वर्ड्स लाइक वट काइंड ऑफ इंजरी जनरली द बैडमिंटन प्लेयर सस्टेन समथिंग लाइक टेनिस एल्बो एक्चुअली टेंडोनाइटिस एंड सम हिल स्प्रिंस देर सो मेनी अदर यू शुड नो द नेम्स दैट विल गिव यू कॉन्फिडेंट kindly make a detailed list of these answers all this will see you through to your interview will give you boost your morale it will boost up your body language still any question if left you can put in the comment box chalte chalte mere ye geet yaad rakhna कभी अलविदा ना कहना कभी अलविदा ना कहना डियर फ्यूचर ऑफिसर्स इफ लिसनिंग टू म्यूजिक इज योर हॉबी एंड यू आर प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर एस एस बी देन दिस इज अ वीडियो देर आर सेवन क्वेश्चन लिसन टू देम आई एम वेरी श्योर यू विल हैव आंसर्स For all the questions which an interviewing officer can ask. How is the Josh? Hi sir. How is the Josh? Hi sir. I said how is the Josh? Hi sir. So, let us see. Which genre of music you like? Whether Bollywood, pop, classical music, jazz, rock music, indie music, Indian classical, or so many other musics of your choice. You have to be very clear. And I think there is nothing like clear because by the time now you are whether eighteen, nineteen, twenty or twenty, twenty-one, surely it is your hobby. You know what is your hobby. so prepare it well it is something like even when you say bollywood music in bollywood also there are different eras like the golden era of 70s and 80s then even the old songs before that then the modern songs the old classical songs also disco songs also there so many other things so be clear about this then comes the who is your favorite singer first and foremost thing is you should know about your singer whether it is kishore kumar whether lata mangeshkar whether mohammad rafi shreya ghoshal and so many other singers you should be very clear about it then your favorite singer which particular album or which are the famous album and this album which you like there may be number of albums which may be very famous also but you may be having a liking to a particular album then comes in that particular album which is your favorite song generally we do have one two three or four five some favorite songs which we can listen 100 times like we never feel irritated or exhausted to listen to that particular song even repeatedly we sing it that's favorite song so that favorite song is from which particular movie it has been casted on which particular actor or actress who is the writer of that particular song there are so many famous writers in the industry like majru sultan puri annu kapoor gulzar anand bakshi so many writers are there somebody likes anand bakshi somebody may like gulzar okay so you should know who is the lyric writer because it is connected to your favorite song if you know you will have a very satisfactory answer for the interviewing officer then sometimes you should also know which are the least favorite songs of yours like you will not like to listen to a particular song you should know there can be any reason be prepared with the reason also 
like earlier we said favorite why it is favorite and why it is not favorite that reason you should have and then interviewing officer can ask you when you started listening to these songs especially to the particular singer or a particular song you should know and i am very sure if it is a favorite song or a favorite singer you are already aware about it you don't have to scratch your head there while sitting in front of interview also then some basic information more basic informations about the writer singer and movie all these things now i come to question number 3 what are the positive aspects of listening to music why you listen to music whether it gives you energy whether it boost up your morale whether you feel utilizing the time what can be the other reasons also these are very important aspects to be addressed and be prepared with a specific answer to the point and absolutely correct and also suitably worded then i come to question number 4 from where you get the information about the new songs new music especially about your favorite writer your favorite singer from where you get it that you should know because this can surely be asked to you like how can you get the information that your singer has uh, come out with the latest song and if you really like some latest song uh, i want you to put them below in the comment box then now i will come to question number 5 that when you listen to music which part of the day or which day of particular week you spend time listening music and how you find time for listening to your this particular hobby how much time you are able to devote in let's say in a week you should know and when you are really devoting you don't have to think and whatever you will say will be absolutely correct then comes the question number 6 on which platform you listen to the music whether it is spotify wink music itunes tune etc and related to this whether you listen to music on paid platforms or unpaid platforms that's very important whether you are really devoted to your hobby or not and then really comes a very fantastic question question number 7 then he may ask you to sing a you sing your favorite song two lines or three lines you should be prepared for that like of any song just sing two three lines and uh, i am very sure everybody has got four five songs and he 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 may say okay sing two songs three lines each for me then you should be singing your favorite song only which you have said that which is your favorite song then it should not come out that you have said kishore kumar is your favorite singer and you are singing mohammad rafi then there is something wrong in your system these were the basic questions any other question which you feel can we ask kindly put it in the comment box thank you so much all listeners and especially all the chess players today we have got apur saxena a wonderful chess player uh, hailing from bareilly now the chain of questions and information about your particular game chess we are starting and yes apur i'd like to know how has playing chess helped you in life thank you sir uh, so chess besides being something that i enjoy very much has taught me valuable life lessons as follows it has taught me to never give up whatever may be the problem uh, because in chess you do not know what might be the result your defeat is only happens when you admit your defeat mentally the second thing at least it has taught me to have patience you should never celebrate too early and 
uh, as the saying goes in chess the hardest thing in the chess is to win a won position so these are the two life lessons that it has taught me okay can you tell me about the governing body of the chess something about yes. the history and yes, other sir. important aspect about chess yes sir so uh, the governing body of the chess uh, is known as fide or international chess federation in english it is, is the governing body of chess uh, internationally and it was founded in 1924 in paris its headquarter is in lausanne which is located in switzerland and the motto is gens una sumus which is a latin phrase uh, which translates into we are one its incumbent president is grandmaster arkady dorkovich who has been a former russian minister and also a chess player its first president was alexander ryu and it was recognized by the international olympics committee in 1999 just two years later uh, just two years later uh, fide bought him the anti drug rules making it eligible to uh, include chess in the olympics the fide is responsible for conducting coveted international tournaments like chess olympiad world chess championship candidates tournament etc awarding titles to decorated players like grand master candidate master fide master etc awarding rating points and promoting chess throughout the globe it can promote chess through variety of ways by bringing more reforms and strengthening national chess federations like all india chess federation which is in india and similar other uh, organizations in other nations thank you sir uh, can you tell me the important indian chess players and india's yes, first male and female grandmasters yes sir so uh, in, uh, first of all let me introduce you to india's first male and female grandmaster the first uh, grandmaster from india was vishwanathan anand uh, who uh, co- who got his grandmaster title in 1988 then the first female indian to achieve the title of grandmaster was hampi konaru uh, who achieved the title in 2002 uh let me name some eminent indian players both in the male and female category in the male category we have vishwanathan anand Ad- adivan baskaran vidit gujarati hari krishna pantala and uh, pragnanand <clears throat> in the female category we have hampi konaru divya deshmukh harika dronavalli uh, danya sachdeva and amrita mukal yeah among these who is your favorite player and why Uh, sir uh, my favorite player is uh, mr vishwanathan anand uh, uh, there are variety of ways but first let me tell some tell you some more info about him then i will explain why he is my favorite player so anand uh, is the former five time world chess champion he is also the first and the only indian to be the world chess champion till now uh, apart from that he is the highest rated indian player and is the only indian in the top 20 international chess players he was also the first awardee of rajiv gandhi khel ratna padma bhushan and padma shri was also awarded to him furthermore he led the indian team to win gold medal in the fide nations cup in 2020 due to his massive speed he was called as lightning kid by uh, people of other countries and his opponents because of his fast speed and uh, made him very successful in his career now talking about why he is my favorite uh, so uh, basically i uh, think that those who pioneer in some field uh, it requires a lot of courage and persistence to gain uh, you know uh, some name in that field and mr vishwanathan anand had done exactly that he put our country on the on the international chess map uh, before him there was absolutely no chess culture in our country but uh, suddenly after him there was a chess boom in india and suddenly india became the fifth strongest chess country as per the fide rankings today no one can undermine our country's strength when it comes to chess but apurv i feel that chess is not very much popular in india if i make you the sports minister or head of the chess organization in the country yes sir what all steps you would like to promote chess yes sir uh, so uh, i think definitely chess uh, looks very uh, underdeveloped when compared with sports like cricket or let's say uh, football in india but i think when we uh, see a game like chess which is more of a strategic game than something of action 
uh, we see that it has gained uh, it has done fairly well in a country like india uh, when we uh, compare it to even developed countries like england like italy or such countries india is today one of the best and let me uh, corroborate my statement with facts out of the 1700 grandmasters that are currently living in, on this planet 72 grandmasters are of india six indians are there in the top 100 and six women indian women are there in the world's top 100 women 20 junior indians are in the top 100 of the world and 12 indian girls are in the top 100 uh, apart from that as i have already mentioned india comes fifth in the fide uh, nations ranking after russia us china and uk now obviously uh, chess is a bit underdeveloped uh, and has not yet tapped its potential i think uh, there uh, there are several reasons the first one is that uh, there is a very low frequency of tournaments uh, in uh, because of if a player wants to make his career in chess and so he needs to play a lot more games and if there will be not more tournaments then somewhere indian players will uh, you know uh, not be able to catch up with the rest of the world the second thing uh, is that the our chess federation all india chess federation is a bit uh, weaker and politicized and i think that needs to be effectively reformed as uh, shri sanjay kapoor ji who is the new uh, president he has been taking actions regarding that uh, furthermore if i were to be the sports minister uh, i would bring in one reform uh, first of all uh, what i would do is that i would make it uh, you know i would support all the chess players financially who are in the top 100 of the country furthermore i would also encourage uh, propagation of chess in uh, you know uh, in schools in colleges and especially uh, you know uh, uh, we, uh, we are having a lot of uh, you know this is mental diseases uh, spreading in our country right now for example alzheimer is proven to be treated uh, with chess so i would encourage more and more people to play chess uh, with you know using uh, our machinery whatever maybe the efforts we will support our players and uh you know we will put india back to its glory again how you feel chess has improved your life and how you have felt gain by the chess sir i think uh, in if i were to relate chess with my life i think uh, the most important thing that i could implement in my own life was the coordination uh, chess has taught me that how important it is to do the right thing at the right time in the right manner which is very uh, very less people understand in chess uh, you might be having uh, the advantage of you know about 10 13 points uh, having a much more material advantage than your opponent but sometimes your opponent can defeat you just with one rook some because your pieces are not coordinating whereas a, a good coordination can uh, you know win you some games where you might not even have some advantage so that has taught me how much importance uh, the coordination holds and i have successfully applied it to many uh, real life challenges that i faced uh, for example i am a volunteer at nss and many a times we are asked to organize things so i got to learn that some people are specially creative in some field for example one of my friend he does a good photography so i know where to apply his skills that has been taught to me by chess Uh, that is why i am able to easily organize things in my college and uh, you know it has aided me in my life thank you what you what have organized in your college, college, college because of the, of the chess, chess. Uh, sir can you repeat the question you mentioned that you have been able to organize things in college like uh, how uh, chess has helped you in organizing what all events yes sir so uh, in nss uh, you might be familiar that in nss we we are having seven day camps in those seven day camps we organize a plethora of activities like cleanliness drives or uh, you know sometimes uh, we have plantation drives so in that case uh, you should there are multiple factors that needs to be considered for example if i am organizing a cleanliness drive there are several things i have to do first of all i have we have we need some some people to clean up the area second thing we need some people to uh, you know draw posters and play, place them at appropriate location third thing we need is someone to photograph us because you see that we are uh, required to report our uh, achievements and our work to our uh, nodal officer and program officer so in that case uh, multiple tasks need to be done simultaneously and in chess this same logic is applied in chess 
in just multiple pieces are your your pieces are working together to checkmate the opponent team so similarly you need to find out what skill each person holds for example as i gave uh, just one example right now i will give another one of my friend uh, whose name is sakshi he uh, is wonderful in writing uh, you know uh, poems and uh, short phrases and all that so uh, i uh, i when i was when i was given the responsibility to organize the cleanliness drive by my nodal officer what i did i gave her the task that you will be uh, uh, devising all the posters which we will be uh, you know pasting uh, in the uh, in the various places at the university and uh, you know all those poems all those small phrases she wrote and uh, my nodal officer himself said that you know uh, these phrases are very good and uh, you know they are catch- very catchy and people are reading them they are taking their time to read those posters so i said sir that is because of that uh, my friend uh, she is very skilled in this particular field and that is why that is the reason for her success okay we keep hearing lot about like so many grandmaster youngest grandmaster female grandmaster but nobody in the world i have i have come across who can tell like how actually this title of grandmaster is decided yes sir so uh, basically uh, we first must understand what are titles uh, titles are given by the international chess federation to those players who are performing you know good, outstanding performance in chess now there are four kinds of titles uh, in increasing order of importance the first one is the candidate master the second one is the fide master the third one is the international master and the fourth one is the grand master now the uh, the lowest one that is the uh, candidate master uh, uh, the process for uh, uh, can becoming a candidate master is uh, there are multiple uh, you know there are multiple uh, ways to become a candidate master but uh, again i will be going through the most common way because the other way is more complex which i will be uh, describing briefly in the end so the common way is to first get a rating of 2200 then a player gets the title of candidate master however if a player ever in his career goes be- below 2200 2, rating he will lose this title now if you want to get to the next level you must become the fide master and that is why you need to get more than 2300 rating and again if you lose uh, points below 2300 then you will lose the title however then uh, the other two titles that is the international master and the grand master these titles are considered to be for lifetime and no matter what uh what is your status whether you are playing whether you are retired whether you are above this rating uh, or whether you are below the required once you have attained any of the international master or grand master it will remain with you for your life <clears throat> and the process for international master is you must and uh, you must score 2400 rating points plus you must uh, satisfy the required number of norms uh similarly <clears throat> for gm for grand master you must attain 2500 rating minimum and must attain the required number of norms now <clears throat> one question that might be you know there what is exactly a norm so a norm is basically uh, let me explain it to you in a very simple way there are two kinds of rating one is the rating that i just told you second is the rating that is known as performance rating performance rating is given on the uh, na- of the quality of your play and it varies from match to match or tournament to tournament <clears throat> for an international master the you need a rating a performance rating of 2450 in nine matches uh, and uh, uh, you know uh, these matches should be part of a fide certified tournament similarly for gm you need a uh, 2650 uh, sorry 2450 uh, rating uh, sorry 2550 rating uh, of performance rating to you know uh, complete your norms and again uh, in 50% of the games of the tournament which is fide certified you must uh, uh, attain those norms now <clears throat> okay there are apur, apur i'll stop you here can you explain the specification of chess setup and yes sir can you tell me how the world champion is decided okay so uh, basically as we all know that there are uh, five pieces in chess king queen bishop knight pawn and rook uh, basically there are six pieces <clears throat> the king must be 9.5 cm long and it is compulsory that the king must always be the la- the longest piece in the ho- in the whole chess set <clears throat> the queen must be 8.5 cm in length the bishop must be 7 cm in the length 
the knight must be uh, one centimeter less than bishop. That is six centimeter, and the pawn should be five centimeter. Now, in these uh, uh, lengths, there ca there can be ten percent of tolerance. Like you can have ten percent more or ten percent less, but the order of uh, length should follow. The base of the the diameter of the base of every piece should be forty percent of the height of the piece. The all, all the pieces used in the three-day tournament must be of Staunton type. <clears throat> the size of a square which is of the uh, one square of the board must be at least twice that of the diameter of the base that is about 5 to 6 cm now talking about the table on which chess uh, the chess board will be placed that table needs to be 110 cm in the length 85 cm in width and 74 cm in height now the next question is that uh, how does one become a world champion so uh, there is a <clears throat> there is uh, a tournament that is held every even year uh that is known as the world chess championship <clears throat> the uh, the reigning world chess champion is challenged by one person and that one person is uh, decided by the candidates tournament which happens every odd year so the whoever wins the candidates tournament which is organized by the chess federation of international chess federation he gets to challenge the reigning world champion and if uh, there are 14 matches that are held and the person the player which uh, who scores 7.5 points first he wins the uh, tournament however in case it is a draw then uh, the uh, battle moves on and uh, we go to the rapid section where there is a 30 uh, uh, where there are uh, 60 minutes <clears throat> uh, 60 minutes of uh, games uh, even if then uh, you know you are not able to win then there is blitz and uh, uh, you know uh, then uh, it is decided who is the winner and uh, you know there it is a much more complex but i have just summarized it for you okay uh, if uh, the recent event which had taken place where the reigning champion could retain his title was it similar to what you have explained the challenge by okay. the candidate champion or something like that sir uh, as we all know that uh, uh, currently uh, the recent chess world chess championship ha was held in dubai to uh, in dubai expo and uh, uh, carlson uh, won the tournament by 7.5 to 3.5 now clearly he reached the 7.5 mark first so he was the winner and successfully defended his title okay earlier i had said that it is chess has not been that popular in india but uh, you came out that we have got 72 grand masters yes and sir and every level we have got high representation and i think in the last olympiad i think we were the joint champions also yes sir we were gold medalist yeah but i would like to know that even in india the northern states have got lesser chess player than southern states yes Why sir so? <coughs> so what uh, can be the reason so sir uh, there is a famous saying in hindi ki kharbuze ko dekh ke kharbuza rang badalta hai and sir this same analogy has been uh, implemented in the indian uh, subcon indian uh, you know in our country so what happened is that uh, uh, in the uh, 70 60s there was this player named manuel arun he was a tamil christian and he was the first international master of from india and he was based in chennai and uh, uh, seeing him there was a, a small chess culture that developed in the outskirts of chennai with opening of many clubs many chess clubs like tal uh, mikhail tile club and several other clubs were opened where the chess club is a place where chess is taught and practiced and basically people play with each other and improve their game <clears throat> similar thing happened with uh, anand so when vishwanathan anand was going he came across one of the clubs in the outskirts of the chennai which is known as the tal club and he joined that club just to you know escape from the tennis lesson that his father had enrolled him into and uh, he started going there playing chess and got hooked up and that's how uh, when anand uh, when anand attained success many more clubs opened in chennai and that that grow like a chain reaction uh, sim similarly andhra pradesh karnataka these states also emerged <clears throat> and again uh, maharashtra then followed the same and that is how it is all spreading hopefully uh, we have seen positive pattern in the northern side as well uh, with uh, many a states like delhi 
uh, which is a UT and uh, particularly Madhya Pradesh also emerging, you know, as major chess uh, chess forces. Is chess a sport, and why it is not involved in the Olympics? <clears throat> so uh, chess is definitely a sport because it has been recognized by the International Olympics uh, Association. However, uh, a game being involved in Olympics has uh, various factors into it. <clears throat> For example, uh, the game must have sufficient viewership, sufficient <clears throat> sufficient followers, uh, followers around the world, and there are several other conditions as well. In 2007, uh, FIDO applied uh, to have chess included in Olympics but uh, it was only an ex exhibition match. However, due to limited popularity of chess and its nature being a more of a static uh, sport, it was not accepted by the Olympics uh, to be part of Olympics then. But we cannot say for future. Okay. And why the chess is so popular in Russia? <clears throat> yes, sir. Or the country around Russia? Yes, sir. So, uh, sir, basically this dates back to the Soviet era. <clears throat> In Soviet era, uh, many a people found chess to be something that they could do in the past time. <clears throat> in Russia, as we know, that during the communist rule, poverty was there. And chess has a very special point with it that it does not require some very expensive setup to play chess. It does not require large fields. It does not require specialized courts like basketball. You can just have a hold, make it yourself and you can play and enjoy chess. <clears throat> now what happened that the Russian government in the early 1940s, 50s, they heavily supported uh, chess. And uh, I must tell you one fun fact. Uh, when Fides announced Grandmaster title, much before that the Soviet Union, uh, the Chess Federation of Soviet Union announced its own Grandmaster title. And that was followed by Fides. And uh, that is why we say that, uh, you know, the Russian government itself was, uh, you know, supporting chess as a sport. Specialized schools were opened throughout Russia. And, you know, the, it was kind of a national duty of every Russian chess player who made it to the world stage to teach the Russian youth the basics of chess. <clears throat> and uh, today also, we see some mark of it. Recently, you might have heard that Jan Nepomniachtchi was defeated by Carlson. Uh, later, it was revealed that Carlson was held by one of the chess players from Russia known as Daniel Dubo. <clears throat> and when this news broke out, suddenly a lot of people, uh, you know, started uh, praying him that you have, you know, uh, made, a, made a dishonor to the country that trained you. Russia, in Russia, they take chess very, very seriously. It is a, ma a matter of national pride for them. So, uh, again, we saw that uh, how people, you know, just like we do with cricket, we see how India-Pakistan rivalry, they do with chess. And that has led to great boom in the uh, in the popularity of chess. And this can, this can be easily seen that Russia today has the most number of grandmaster on the earth, with 255 grandmaster to be precise, and 2,000 titled players all over the world. Okay, now if I ask you, like I have heard that International Chess Day is 20th of July, and with 195 members of FIDE. Yes, sir. But there are countries in the world who have banned chess. Yes, Why sir. and which are these countries? Sir, uh, Saudi Arabia and Iran have banned chess because uh, <clears throat> of citing, they are citing the religious reasons. <clears throat> there is a popular belief that uh, have unknown origin that chess uh, encourages gambling. And gambling is considered to be something that is haram in Islam and uh, some similar Abrahamic religions. So that is my, that might be an issue with them. So that is why they have been. However, this has proved to be very bad for them because uh, Iran has lost a very potent uh, chess player, Ali Reza Firuza, to France. <clears throat> okay. Like if we see these type of condition, like which all platforms you recommend to the youngsters, which can really benefit them in learning chess. And as you say, chess helps you in increasing your nervous activities, making you more precise, making various plans 
organizing events and so many other things useful in life which all platforms you will recommend to the youngsters so if you are talking about uh, learning chess then i think there are two very important platforms one is chessable <clears throat> which is owned by the world champion himself the second is leechess which is an open source and free platform then there is chess.com which is very good uh, which is having very good interface and uh, it can provide you very accurate ratings where you stand in, in chess and you know its rating is almost similar to that of fide rating Uh, so i would recommend if you want to play and practice then go for chess.com otherwise you know if you want to learn and train yourself then it is better to go for the chess and chessable okay. okay can you tell me in how many ways you can win or lose <coughs> or draw in a match in chess <coughs> so sir uh, these are the following ways in which we can win in chess <coughs> the first one is checkmate of course second one is resignation third one is uh, uh, third one is abolish uh, sorry forfeit fourth one is uh, uh, <clears throat> fourth one is time out and fifth one is uh, is uh, cheating uh, that is the you know something related to this uh, regarding the rules that fide has set up then we come to the draw <clears throat> there are 10 ways to draw the first one is stalemate then comes uh, three move uh, uh, sorry uh, Uh, there then comes the 50 move rule third one is insufficient material time out fourth one is time out fifth one is uh, uh, agreement sixth one is uh, your uh, three fold repetition seventh one is continuous check checks eighth one is uh, uh, eighth one is uh, you know stalemate uh, ninth one is uh, your uh, <clears throat> ninth one is your uh, uh, ninth one i cannot remember sir that last okay two. okay that, that's good enough but uh, i have heard i am not very sure it is correct or not that you can win a chess match in just two moves is it possible yes sir it is very much possible there is a special name for it it is called fools checkmate or fools mate it happened when it happens when the two pawns right in uh, you know one pawn uh, just adjacent and the other pawn just adjacent to the previous pawn both of them are moved in that case the opponent can use his queen to checkmate the king in just two moves okay and every time we in the news we hear that that particular player started with white he started with the black ones what is this and how does the difference it makes whether you play with white or whether you play with the black ones so actually difference is uh, there because uh, it is considered that white has the more advantage when it comes to in when it comes to chess because uh, when you are white you get to decide the flow of the game and how the game would end up <clears throat> so you are basically deciding where to take the game whether you want to make it positional whether you want to make it more attacking whether you might want to make it more sharp or defensive then it depends on you uh, it is decided by uh, you know in various tournament in through various methods that who gets black or who gets white now uh, the white goes first as we all know and uh, those who go first uh, you know uh, for black there all the openings are known as defenses and for white all the openings are you know attacks basically english attack or uh, stone wall attack or like that so <clears throat> uh, in fide world chess championship how it is uh, decided is that uh, a balloon in this particular the recent most recent one a balloon was given to both the players <clears throat> now uh, one color of you know sparkle was placed in each each of the balloon one being white and one being black now uh, the uh, you know the players are uh, called down to choose any one of the balloon and needle it and burst it out and whoever gets the black sparkle he gets to play the first match with black and the other one gets to play the first one with white however uh, overall both are given the equal chances to play with both white and black okay that's nice uh, i want like a very famous question i don't know uh, i have not read the answer anywhere why chess is called chess and are there any other variants of chess also <clears throat> yes sir so uh, chess is called uh, chess because uh, it was or uh, originated in india and it was then called chaturanga uh, during the gupta empire <clears throat> now when uh, this chaturanga propagated to the western countries to to arab merchants 
and uh, you know western civilization then it became chess <clears throat> because uh, you know uh, first of all uh, the persians called shah shamat they called to they used to call checkmate as shahmat so uh, you know that's how checkmate we know of today and similarly uh, the germans called shark and uh, uh, the in english it was used to called the chess <clears throat> now there are multiple variants of chess uh, let me uh, uh, let me list them the first one is japanese chess that is known as shogi uh, the second one is go that is the chinese chess <clears throat> third one is the western chess that we all know fourth one is chess 960 Chess 960 was invented by Bobby Fischer, who was a former world chess championship from uh, former world chess champion from US. Uh, he won. He invented it because he thought that the complexity of chess needed to be increased. <clears throat> And the, uh, there are multiple other variants. Like uh, uh, in Indian chess, what they used to do is that uh, they did not castle. And one of the most uh, famous player for Indian chess was Mir Sultan Khan, who was actually a slave of an English master. but he defeated the most strongest player of that time uh, capablanca okay now can you tell me about the the ranking given by fide and what has been the highest score achieved by any international player and <coughs> also by highest by any indian also could you throw yes, some sir. light on this yes sir so uh, i think uh, sir Uh, the system for ranking the players is using uh, the rating points rating points are given to a player when he wins a match and are deducted from the player when he loses a match <clears throat> if it's a draw it depends upon what uh, what is the rating of the opponent <clears throat> if it, the opponent of the rating is less then he loses point if it is more than he might gain points or might be um, there might be no change now as per the rating uh the currently the uh, all the players in the world are uh, you know the top most players of the world are currently in the 2800 plus rating uh between the 2800 and 2900 range uh out of these uh, there is one indian that is vishnathan anand uh, and the highest rated player magnus carlsen is having the rating of 2856 which is the currently the highest rating in the world no human player has ever crossed 2900 rating however uh, the computer engines like alpha zero stockfish they have crossed 3000 even rating uh, but again that is beyond the scope because no human has ever done that <clears throat> uh, as far as the uh, uh, as far as uh, uh, sir i what is your next question i was i forgot the your another question that you asked okay uh, i would like to know which are the tournaments at international level and national level which are being played yes sir, yes, sir. so at national level there is national chess championship national junior chess championship national girls chess championship under 20 <clears throat> national women chess championship and uh, in international arena uh, there we have can candidates tournament uh, fide world chess championship fide nations cup fide olympiad uh, and uh, again then there is a, a tata tata steel chess tournament uh, and norway chess so there are multiple uh, you know chess tournaments okay that's fine and uh, the final question of today discussion like who is the present world champion in men and women so sir the present world champion in the men's section is magnus carlsen uh, and uh, he is from norway he was uh, uh, he was he attained the world champion ship title in 2013 after beating vishnathan anand and <clears throat> the current women chess championship uh, is with uh, uh, hao yifan of uh, china and uh, she is also uh, the strongest uh, chess player uh, in the world right now in the female section okay that's fine wonderfully you have covered and uh, i think all our listener and especially the future uh, defense officers will be benefited who has got chess as hobby a uh, lot of very important question has been covered by apur there may be some question which, which would have been left that can always be asked on whatsapp queries you can post me your questions uh, thank you apur thank you so mm. much very nicely you have covered i think lot of your friends will be benefited by this thank you so thank much you. god bless you take care